What is up, guys? Today we are back for, um, not a live, a little, a little something different. You can tell by the thumbnail. That's probably why you clicked on this video or the title or whatever, but, um, I have been, uh, experiencing a lack of interest for the current Pokebank OU tier. And, uh, the team you guys see on your screen right now is a team that my good friend, uh, Jose passed me. He made it with one of his friends. And, um... Works pretty well, actually. Uh, the biggest uh, win condition on this team is Salamence with uh, Supersonic Sky Strike, Dragon Dance. It's amazing. Um, but I'm finding a lot of little issues with the team, a lot of uh, difficulties um, as I test it out and continue to play with it. And I'm, I'm about 50 50 with the team right now. And I want to talk about the meta a little bit and what's, uh, what's happening. Because let me. Um, let me actually just close this, open this back up, and let me uh, show you guys what the current Pokebank OU tier looks like. So, right now you have Mega Zam, Buzzwool, Celesteel. I'm just going to let you guys look at it. And basically, the Pokemon that keep coming back on, um, they keep coming back up. Apparently, the servers are starting very soon. Um, <laughs> somebody just let me know, so I might have to pause at some point. But anyway, the Pokemon that keep appearing. <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you a list of, a, of about 10 to 15 on almost all teams that I run into. Ash Greninja, Magearna, Magnezone, Mega Metagross, Feramosa, Mega Pinsir, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Fini, Tapu Coco, Tapu Lele, Toxapex, and then if we scroll down here, Zardex, um, not so much Dougie, not so much Pharaoh, I'd say Heatran, Lando T, um, Rotom Wash at the moment is kind of popular. Uh, so that's the list, actually. Let, let's, let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at 14 Pokemon, okay? So, we've got 14 Pokemon. Uh, we'll round it out with Skarm. There you go. Uh, 15 Pokemon that keep coming up. I would even go as far as saying Garchomp. Maybe you can drop one of them and put Garchomp in that list. But anyway, uh, about 15 Pokemon that keep coming up repeatedly in battles. Now... You look at this and you're like, oh, well, it's the OU tier. That's what happens. That's what, that's what occurs with usage. That's just perfectly normal. Now, I want you to take a look at how many of the Pokemon that I named are from Gen 7. Ash Greninja, Magearna, uh, Feramosa. We have the four Tapus, Toxapex, and that's it. So, what about eight, eight of those Pokemon? So, about half of the Pokemon that I named are from the Alola region. So, that might not seem like that many, but a few of these Pokemon have a very heavy influence on our metagame right now. And I'm gonna tell you exactly which ones. Specifically, specifically these two. Tapu Fini and Tapu Lele. Now, a lot of people, including myself, think that Tapu Lele should be banned. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because, just like Aegislash, this thing is over-centralizing. And you can argue with me, you can debate with me, but let's just take a look real quick at what the Gen 6 OU meta looked like. Alright? So, for a lot of you that are new to Pokemon, for anybody that never played Gen 6, here you go. This is what our metagame looked like in Gen 6. As you can see, we have a lot of diversity in typings, uh, in the Megas that we have. Um, in everything, and like a lot of Pokemon from BL often came up, uh, things such as Scallopede, uh, Togekiss made some appearances from time to time, uh, you'd have Mega Gyarados teams, Diggersby was often on teams, uh, Alakazam is a focus, Sashmon was very popular, um, so, you see, like, our meta, this meta diversified a lot throughout the course of Gen 6. I played almost all of Gen 6, so I know where uh, whereabouts it started, where it ended. Uh, things like Greninja were banned, uh, Hoopa Unbound. And you look at that list that I gave you guys before, Hoopa Unbound on here, I didn't even mention it uh, while, while I was going through the Mons because it's not something that pops up too often. Hoopa Unbound, a Pokemon that was banned in Gen 6, for its sheer power, is not very good right now in OU. That's saying a lot. Now, where am I getting with this? Like I said before, uh, Tapu Fini and Tapu Lele are the biggest problems. Tapu Fini doesn't deserve a ban. 
in, in no way, shape, or form does it need to be banned. It's just extremely bulky. It's a reliable defogger. It's amazing at what it does. It weakens its checks uh, with, um, with Nature's Madness when they switch in. Uh, it taunts slower Pokemon, preventing them from getting rid of hazards. If you have them up or setting them up to begin with uh, or setting up, or anything like like <laughs> Top of Finney is amazing. It's so good. This base 85 speed tier, you don't even need to invest into it to make it faster than a lot of setup sweepers and a lot of uh, a lot of fat walls that want to set up defensively, like with Calm Mind or whatever. So that's that's Top of Finney for you. The big issue is Top of Lele though, because this thing. Let's talk about Top of Lele for a second. Everybody knew this thing was good when it was first released. <laughs> this this ability uh, with this item with this attack is disastrous this this does this does like 25 percent to four times resist that means if the pokemon came in and it didn't have any kind of resist it would be dead just to give you an idea so what what four times resist psychic types um well we have mega metagross and jirachi so uh psychic and steel but this thing gets shadow ball so you always have to worry about that and then you have dark types so which you can switch in on psychic type attacks but dark types don't like taking this thing's other stab which is moon blast and not to mention you have a free last slot to run focus blast or hidden power fire to hit diverse steel types so as you can see uh this thing's four moves perfect excellent for what it needs to do you, you the team synergy you can create with this and on top of that it gives great team support with its ability um now, why do I think this thing should be banned? Because, like I said, it's over-centralizing. And a lot of people are going to argue with me that it's not Aegislash at all. It's, it's nothing like Aegislash. What are you talking about? Uh, it doesn't do the same things as, as Aegislash at all. Yeah, you know, the problem with Aegislash was that you always needed something on your team to kill it. <laughs> because it was so overused. You needed something on your team that would be able to knock it out in at least one to two hits. Because uh, nothing was really ever taking it out in one hit except for like Lando Eyes, Earth Power. So, you think about that. Um, Asia Slash was annoying because it was hard to kill. And it could be annoying because of Sub. Uh, because of the Sub Toxic set with uh, with King Shield. It, has, it had its own form of protect. It was much more diverse than Tapu Lele. But Tapu Lele just hits ridiculously hard. It doesn't even matter. Like... Uh, Age of Slash would go to base 150 special attack um, with max investment, so that's really, really strong. Like, this would go up to about 400, roughly. Uh, a little bit more, maybe, I think like 438, actually, uh, to be specific. Um, but this, with Psychic Terrain, is stronger. <laughs> it's it's just stronger. It hits way harder than, uh, than Age of Slash can. And, like I mentioned before, the team support. Uh, what do I think the problem is with the meta right now like what needs to change it might not be specifically tapu lele there's another big issue that we have right now that is preventing our meta from diversifying and that is every steel type that is introduced to wall tapu lele also has offensive capabilities and end up being very prevalent in the tier things like celesteela heat ran mega metagross like magnazone even as a trapper there, there, there's the, uh, <laughs> there's the servers going down. Uh, let's get back to the team builder real quick. Sorry about that, guys. I uh, use team builder and security. Yeah, sure, whatever. Anyway, so yeah, just some of those steel types that I was naming. Why is this happening? You ask. Why? Like, just look right here. Look at this. You have four steel types in five Pokemon: Excadrill, Ferrothorn, Heatran, Jirachi. You go a little bit higher. You have all the other steel types: Skarmory, uh, Mega Metagross. Magnezone, Magearna, Kartana, Celesteela. Why are there so many Steel types in the OU tier right now? Well, it's not just because of Tapu Lele. There's something very important that our meta is missing right now. And a lot of you might have already figured this out by now. But I'm going to pull them up on screen right now. There are three Megas that in OU were extremely... Uh, powerful and difficult to deal with and they're all fighting types mega heracross megalopony and mega metacham none of which we have access to right now in the gen 7 ou metagame because their mega stones are not released as a result let me show you again 
the fighting types that we currently have in the OU tier are limited to Faramosa, Buzzwool, and that's it. That's literally it. We have two fighting types in OU right now, guys. One of them is frail as all hell <laughs> and dies to any form of priority, uh, or almost. It almost gets O-Code by Mega Metagross's Jolly Bullet Punch from full. And the other one is just so easily revengeable by any kind of special attacker. It's actually kind of funny because um, Tapu Lele kills Buzzwool super easily. Uh, if it's if they're both scarfed, let's say, for example, if Tapu Lele can outspeed it, of course, uh, because of Psychic, it can even knock it out with Moonblast. It doesn't really matter. You can use any either one of its stabs, so you never really have to lock yourself into Psychic if you just want to go for Moonblast. And then you look at Faramosa, and it's actually the opposite. Faramosa is a great partner for Tapu Lele because you can pull off sweeps in endgame uh, with Psychic Surge up because no form of priority is going to disrupt your sweep anymore. Like Pinsir's Quick Attack, if you've weakened it enough, if it's coming on rocks twice, once unmega Evolved and once Mega Evolved, uh, with a Beast Boost on attack, let's say for example, if you're a Scarf set, you can knock it out with like a Lunge. So there's, there's only these two fighting types, and these fighting types cannot deal with all these Steel types. Like, how is Buzzwool going to deal with Celesteela when it has such huge bulk? How is it going to deal with Mega Metagross when it's part Psychic type, or Jirachi, for, for example? Like, yes, it can hit them hard, but it's going to get hit hard, pretty hard back. How is Faramosa going to deal with um, walls like Tapu Fini, for example? H how does Faramosa deal with it? Well, you can say Poison Jab, yeah, but it's not going to die, and you're going to die to a Moon Blast. Y you look at things like... Um, you have to make predictions around their steel types too because almost everybody's running a ghost right now whether it be Alolan Marowak or Mega Sableye or uh, what was the other ghost um, that I ran into uh, recently I can't even remember now uh, but anyway people are running a lot of ghosts uh, to be able to stop the high jump kick spam and just running a fairy alone like Tapu Lele four times resists fighting see that's that's the thing with the synergy right now is that Tapu Lele plus two steel types pretty much equals a win if you play correctly of course because the only two fighting types that are going to break down your steel types have to deal with a prediction game around whether or not you're going to switch in your four times resist to fighting and have them do nothing to you or if you're going to go into an, a different check because Faramosa always wants to u-turn out but if it's you turning out against a steel type constantly it's not getting enough damage off unless it's like mega Meta metagross of course but every other steel type completely walls that uh, and with Buzzwool, again, it has to make a prediction around, is Tapu Lele going to switch in? Is he going to go into his, uh, his Pelipper's Mantine? Because those are things now, apparently. Uh, or his Lando T, and I'm going to do no damage, and I'm going to take a Rocky Helmet hit needlessly, and I'm going to keep taking damage from rocks. The fact that these two are the only fighting types right now in the OU tier make it so that way too many Steel types exist. And because there are too many Steel types... Tapu Lele doesn't get to do its job as well as it normally would. So, you can argue that it's not over-centralizing right now, but if there was a Megalopony to be able to knock out every single Heatran and Ferrothorn and Celesteela uh, with two high jump kicks and uh, Kartana and every every other... Well, Kartana's not a good switch into Tapu Lele, but like AV Magnazone... Uh, all of those, Alolan Muck even, like, Alolan Muck is a great check to Tapu Lele because of its insane special defense if you pack on an Assault Vest, but it can't switch into Return Plus High Jump Kick from Megalopony, nor can it switch into Mega Metacham's High Jump Kick, nor can it switch into Pin Missile from, um, from Mega Heracross. Those three specific fighting type Megas missing from the tier right now have created such a, a huge gap uh, in, uh, in power right now, because th you look at things like Azumarill and Charizard Y and, um, like so many huge, huge threats that have dropped down into UU. It's actually ridiculous. The number, like Gengar is because of the nerf, of course, but it's not just that it's, it's everything right now. There are so many Pokemon that have taken a tumble because of the fact that we don't have certain Megas. I'll even go as far as saying Mega Manectric. You know, because we lost that speed tier. That 135 speed tier that Megalopony and Mega Manectric hit, we don't have that right now. We're stuck on, like, this gap between, like, Ash Greninja, 
which is 399 and then if you're not running a scarfer the next fastest thing would be like either mega alakazam or Feramosa. so there's this big there's this huge gap in speed and we don't have it right now and mega manectric is able to check a lot of those steel types too celesteela is dying magnazone's not dealing with it well and it's going to take a flamethrower you're going to get volt switched on if you keep switching out into heat ran ferrothorn's not taking a flamethrower neither is excadrill like uh, there's there's a huge 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 mi like there are huge missing pieces right now in the OU metagame and that's causing for a very stale metagame right now because we have uh Tapu Lele plus steel types the the musical basically and it's really annoying I don't like dealing with it because I have to use specific mons all the time I, there's no room for diversity there is zero room for diversity right now, guys. You Like, the best thing I can think of that you could bring up to OU would be, like, Gorgeist. <laughs> like, honestly, per this this thing right here, try this out, guys, if you want to give it a shot. It's got Frisk. That's an awesome ability. But the fact that it's got huge physical defense, and none of the physical attackers right now are, are like, absolutely annihilating this thing. And it can just seeds, you know, Leech Seed. And then it's got Seed Bomb to deal with uh, Tapu... Uh, Finny that wants to um, that wants to taunt it and prevent it from going for Leech Seed, it's going to have to take a huge attack because this thing has decent attack, as you can see, uh, base 100, and then you can run Rock Slide if you think Pinsir is a switch in, uh, and then you can run uh, Synthesis as a last move for reliable recovery, right, right there, there's your set, and this thing walls like half the metagame right now, but other than this, like seriously, other than this, there's no room for diversity at all. You can't bring up like a Mega Absol, it's going to get destroyed. You can't bring up a Cloyster or a Conkelder. Uh, Conkelder that used to be such a big threat and no use. So, so good. Um, Breloom. <laughs> Breloom. Like that thing, when, you, when you'd when you see it on a team, you'd be like, oh, how am I going to deal with this thing? It's going to be so annoying with, with Mach Punch. You know, it's, it's going to keep taking down my my checks to, to, to spore and to, to grass type attacks and stuff like that and Breloom is nowhere to be seen because Breloom can't do anything right now and Tapu Lele is a big big issue with this because like I said before guys it's over centralizing but we're not noticing it because there are so many steel types that are allowed to run free and just check it and just like beat it and there's nothing you can do and you're gonna lose your Tapu Lele as a result uh, and because of that, people aren't seeing how powerful this thing is. But nobody would be running that many steel types if this thing wasn't around. <laughs> if this thing wasn't in the tier, you wouldn't see that many steel types. Like let's let's compare. How many did we how many did we count before? Let, let's just count real quick. So we got one, two, three, four, five. All right, so that's already five, six, and then we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got, currently got 10 Steel types that are classified as OU among these, like, probably 30 Pokemon. Alright, so, yeah, by the way, that's, that's about 34, 35 Pokemon in there, maximum. And now let's take a look at the Gen 6 OU metagame. Let's see how many Steel types we had back then. So we had Bisharp, that's one. Excadrill, two. Ferrothorn, three. Heatran, four. Jirachi, five. Uh, Magnazone, six. Uh, Skarmory, seven. Would you look at that? There were fewer steel types, and I'm even looking at BL. There's not a single steel type in here, by the way. There were fewer steel types that were around in Gen 6 than in Gen 7. And again, this is because of all of the things that we don't have right now. All of these fighting types, and plus Mega Manectric. Like I said, I'm going to count it in. The fact that we don't have access to these right now is making a world of difference. I didn't count Scizor and Mega Scizor before, I'm sorry guys, it's actually 8. It's still lower than what we have right now. And I understand that new Steel types got introduced, we have Celesteela, we have Kartana, we have Magearna, but a lot of those things wouldn't be as good as they are right now. They're still very good mons, but they wouldn't be as overused as they are right now if it wasn't for the fact that Game Freak prevented us uh, or Nintendo or whoever's uh, currently managing all this preventing us from having access to these megas because like I said before there are, there are only like two ghost types right now in OU that are seeing play so little Marowak and the other one that I said 
So Mega Metacham is just gonna spam high jump kick. <laughs> like, what, what are you gonna switch in? Your top Ulele and take like 40? Cause like, that's what Mega Metacham does. It does like 40% 40, 40 to top Ulele. So it's only gonna switch in once. And it's also faster than Tapu Lele, by the way, because this, is, this thing had a great uh, speed tier. Um, it's it, with base 100. It's it's amazing because it was actually able to out. It's actually able to outspeed things like Tapu Fini and Tapu Lele, but we don't have it right now. Same thing with Mega Manectric. Same thing with Mega Lopini. Mega Heracross is a little bit lesser, and I think that if it were to, it were to be reintroduced, it would be out of the three. It would probably drop to UU to be perfectly honest with you guys, because of the new toys that we got now. Like, Mega Heracross can't do too much to Tapu Fini. Like, yes, it can run Bullet Seed, but it's still going to get destroyed by a Moonblast. Uh, you can always see the, the Bullet Seed coming. There's things like Celesteela, which basically, like, if, if you have to spam uh, close combat against something like that, it's going to take you out with a Flying-type move. Uh, it's the same way Skarmory was. You basically have to switch out on it because you, you can't take it down. Um... And now we have another one of those. We have another Skarmory. So of all of the ones that I mentioned, Mega Heracross is probably the lesser of the four. But specifically when we're talking about fighting types, we have Mega Lopini and Mega Metacham. And uh, this Mega Manectric uh, that's missing in the tier as well. Uh, they're making a huge, huge difference, man. I'm telling you. Uh, people don't even see it. And even things like Mega Altaria... Uh, Mega, Ga Mega Gallade would probably be really good right now. I'm just gonna put that out there uh, Because it gets access to things like Leaf Blade uh, Which can destroy uh, Tapu Fini uh, if it's a plus two uh, so Like Mega, Mega Gallade would probably be a lot better right now than it was in Gen 6 um, Mega Pidgeot Where is that like give us our Megas <laughs> like come on man I want I want all these Megas back because we don't have enough of them right now we've we've created an offset balance of gen 7 power like i said before there are like uh what, what did we say eight gen 7 pokemon that are currently in ou out of like 35 mons that means that out of all of the pokemon that have ever been released there are uh about 20 about 20 percent of our metagame at the moment is made up of the most recent generation which is one of the smallest generations might i add so but it's not just the power creep that's doing this. It's the fact that they have not released these megas. I, I can't like I honestly cannot wait to use Mega Deancey. Like I'm I'm so hyped for it because of the speed boost that it got. That is so so important for Mega Deancey and the fact that it get, now gets power gem. Like both of those things so so good. But we can't use it <laughs> because it's it's not released yet. We need some kind of update in Sun and Moon to give us these mega stones. Because we, we, we seriously are uh, lacking right now. Uh, I wanted to have some replays play for you guys. But I thought it would be more important for uh, you to see what the, uh, what the metagames actually looked like in Gen 6 and Gen 7. Now I'm not... Like I know it sounds like I'm complaining. But it's, it's less of a complaint. More of like... Um, I want to say like uh, me just saying that I'm bored right now of this of this metagame i love playing ou dude it's it's the most competitive of all the tiers of course because there's the most people playing it so it's it's hard to ladder up it's it's not an easy task um at first it was i was i was actually always at the top of pokemon co u and then when more and more people started playing it getting used to it uh i'm, I'm like back to where i used to be you know uh in like the mid 200s uh on the ladder like 200th place so like I, I don't consider myself the best player <laughs> the best Pokemon player at all I'm far from that but I think I'm, I'm pretty good um, as a Pokemon player and I'm just tired of this tier right now like I'm having a lot more fun like if you guys haven't tried UU and RU yet especially RU RU is so fun like you have Gen 5 Weather Wars and then you have like so many other like cool things that you can use in uh, in RU. The only problem with RU right now is like that you have to run hazard removal because there are so many good spike setters like Galissapod and uh, Klefki down there. So you're forced to run uh, hazard removal if you want to function. Um, so that needs to be uh, corrected a little bit. I think Klefki is a little bit too good for the tier. That's just my opinion. But anyway, we're not talking about RU. But definitely go try those tiers out, guys, because I'm having a lot more fun with those than I am with OU. And, like, that's the thing right now is that I've been having trouble recording lives because I've been so focused on, like, okay, what can I what can I do in OU 
uh, to make it a little bit better because literally all I want to do is bring let me see if I can show you guys where is it let me scroll down a little bit uh, this team right here all I want to do is bring this team honestly like the team that Jose gave me you guys have probably seen this team before this team is amazing but look again Tapu Lele, Faramosa, Mega Metagross, Toxapex, Mamoswine like Mandibuzz is not as used right now, but I still love it on this team. It, it does wonders. It pairs so well with everything else. But all I want to do is play this team because it, it does the best. And every time I try to get creative with a team and do something different, it ends up failing. And yes, I could spend more time and, and research and, okay, what can I change? What can I do differently? But you have to understand that I also have a full-time job. I'm not doing YouTube as a full-time job, so I'm not as privileged uh, to be to have that time to to devote uh, into building as some other youtubers that you guys watch so I will say that it is difficult uh, so what I'm gonna start doing from now on guys is until I'm going not not necessarily completely but until we get some kind of a sign because Pokebank was released and I, w I had my fingers crossed that they would just announce that uh, the Mega Stones were all coming in a patch and we were gonna have all access to all of the Megas that we had in Gen 6 Just just to make it back to normal have like our our old uh, metagame back But they didn't do that. So until they do do that Until they decide to release a patch for the old Megas that we are currently missing uh, I will not be focusing on OU I am actually going to be trying to avoid it as much as possible because it's not fun anymore. Uh, I'm going to be trying out the other tiers. I'm hoping that they release an NU tier very soon, hopefully. Let's see what happens with that. I think they're just gradually moving their way down, uh, and they've done a great job so far of uh, with UU and RU. They've done a great, great job. And I think, like, I, I don't think you guys realize how much of an impact it's actually going to make on the lower tiers as well if those Megas get released. Because when you have things like Megalopony and Mega Manectric and Mega Metacham that get introduced into a tier all at once, you have to start finding checks <laughs> and, and fast or else those things are going to run through your team as well. They're very good sweepers, uh, late game cleaners, uh, just wall breakers in general. So you have to find new... Um, new Pokemon to deal with them and uh, and every other tier is gonna shift as a result because things are gonna see less play uh, so they're going to move down things are going to see more play in OU so they're gonna move into OU kind of the way that like Amoongus and Quagsire did when Stall was po popular back in Gen 6 and uh, yeah, as a result of those things leaving their lower tiers more things are going to emerge from the tiers below the one they were in before so on and so forth so yeah, that's, that's basically where I'm going to leave it off, guys. Um, I'm just probably going to avoid OU as much as possible. You should be getting a live later today. Hopefully, I'll try to record one, uh, try to get a team in one of the lower tiers, like I said before. So, our, our channel is going to be focusing mainly on RU and UU right now, just until everything gets back to normal. And that might, that might take a while, but we do have the GPC starting up. We have... Um, you guys get to hear me as an analyst uh, on the GBA channel as well, so that's always fun. And uh, yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave it off, guys. If you did enjoy, if you agree uh, or disagree with anything that I said, I want to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. It's always nice to see what you guys think uh, when I make videos like this. And um, like, I, lo I love having debates with people, honestly. It's, it's one of the, the f funnest things to do uh, that I've always loved to do since I was like 17. Uh, maybe even younger, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop me a like. It's always appreciated. Um, again, leave comments, subscribe if you haven't already, if this is your first time on the channel, because uh, there's a chance that this video gains popularity because of the thumbnail and the title. So if, if you're new here, then definitely hit that subscribe button uh, for more content like this and lives in general. And I will catch you guys later. Ciao.